Hi everyone, Paul Hodgson from Box of Frogs, uh, www.bforbravo.com. Uh, today it's not especially, this particular tutorial isn't especially around uh, Nikon software, either View NX2 that's displayed on the screen, um, or NX2, but rather a stitching piece of software that's free from Microsoft, called Microsoft Ice. Let me show you here, no 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 no, wrong one. Uh, so if you Google Microsoft Ice, you'll come to this page, and uh, it's only for Windows viewers. So for you Mac people, sorry, this isn't is is not going to be relevant. Uh, although all, all, pretty much all of the functions that you'll find uh, in uh, Microsoft Ice, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to do through Photoshop. Having said that, you have to buy Photoshop. Anyway, so um, Google Ice, it is magnificent which uh, you'll see in a minute. So, back in ViewNX, I've got a card in my card reader. Just want to show you how I ingest um, photographs. So I'm going to go up to this transfer button here and it's going to open up a dialog box. And here are the six, sorry, 15 images that I'm going to uh, import. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, uh, there are many functions in here, but um, one of the things it does is it says where do you want to pop these photographs so for the moment I'm selecting desktop I'm going to create a new folder I'll just call it stitch click OK and then hit start transfer I'm going to pause the video while it does that and come back in a minute just hold tight okay so that's done and we've got down here the 15 images that we're going to uh, put through Microsoft Ice they're all JPEGs. Uh, you can shoot, of course, raw, uh, convert them to JPEG, and pop those JPEGs into Microsoft Ice. Uh, and what I do is um, I made a bit of a boo-boo uh, here. Well, not here. This this particular shot of my out of focus finger effectively says that from the next shot, so that's my starting photograph. Uh, what I didn't do at the other end is uh, pop another slide here, another photograph that would normally be here showing two fingers uh, to say that that's the last image and I know everything between this one with one finger and the other one with two fingers they're the shots that I'm going to use. So these were taken yesterday as my wife and I were looking around at buying a new car so I was just stood uh, on the lot of a car dealership and if you can imagine my feet were and I kept my feet pointing straight ahead so with the back of the showroom sorry with the, the showroom uh, behind me my feet were pointing forwards to this row of houses and then I pivoted my torso from left to right so my feet stayed completely still I just twisted my torso I took a, a shot yes it's it is underexposed, but I, ca I, I, I focused, turned um, focusing off, auto focusing off, kept the same exposure that uh, this shot was taken with to do the other 14 photographs. And it's that that I'm going to be, it's those 14 photographs there to here that I'm going to be using in Microsoft Ice. So I'm going to leave those where I am and I'm going to go over to Microsoft Ice. So here's the interface. Just going to close that down a little bit. And the reason being is I need to find my stitch folder. I need to make sure I ignore that one. So I'm going to choose those 14 photographs, drag them over to Microsoft Ice with my mouse, uh, let go of the mouse key, it's going to drop it in, don't need this dialog box anymore. And I'm just going to allow those to come in. And when it, as it's working its magic, it will be stitching them together. So next time I come up to this screen, because I'm going to pause the video, um, you'll see the stitched images and there we have it it's very dark um, but we'll correct that in a minute and what it is showing is the, um, the you know, how much of the image image I'm actually missing or the individual photographs so a couple of things that I'm going to do here and by the way this is all just simply left to Microsoft Ice I've not made any adjustments so far so I'm coming to this section over here saying automatic crop so it it calculates beginning and end of photographs across the entire image and then it gives you the maximum cropped area that it can uh, 
So I leave it at that. You can create different formats from all of these 14 photographs. I'm just going to leave it as a JPEG, but you can create TIFFs, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to put the quality up to 100%. I want to get the maximum out of it. Um, the cropped image, you can have a look at the data down here, how much it's actually keeping. So it's a pretty big file. And now all I need to do is export it to disk. So it gives its own extension. So uh, whatever the first file was, and then underscore stitch. I'm going to go to my desktop, go to the stitch file, and just pop it there. So I'm just going to save it. Again, I'm going to pause the vid. Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to, I don't need this any longer, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to just discard those changes and I'm going to pop into View NX. Let's maximize the screen. Okay, and so there is the stitched image from 14 photographs. Incidentally, one thing I forgot to mention when I do my stitching, irrespective of how many images I'm going to be using, I always put the camera in portrait orientation and um, I use the, the the guides within my Nikon uh, viewfinder that gives me a grid if you haven't got a grid uh, I would make the suggestion that at least 25 percent of the frame that you're taking at that moment is also incorporated into your next shot and so on and so forth so you've got plenty of overlap I use the um, the grid guides within the viewfinder of my Nikons to, to do exactly that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, very uh, dark. I know I'm going to, uh, there's going to be a, an issue here uh, in terms of um, this is just going to blow out. It, it actually already is. So, I, you know, but this is about a tutorial. This isn't about getting a picture perfect photograph for this, uh, for this tutorial. So hope you understand. But what I'm interested in is just lightening the uh, the dark areas. So I'm going to go over to my sort of develop section over here, the adjustment section. I can't change image compensation, can't change white balance, so on and so forth, because these are JPEGs. Um, but what I can do is I'm going to come down to shadow protection, and I'm going to raise the shadows of the image to a point where I think that's okay and that'll do for me I think so let's have a quick look around I'm gonna go to 50% view let it just render obviously there's plenty of other things that I would like to be able to do with the file so what I would do is if I was shooting RAW as I do all of the time is certainly all of these files particularly where there was uh, a transition between dark and uh, and light um, I'd uh, I'd utilize um, chromatic aberration correction to get rid of those that, that sort of blooming. What I'm looking for here are any anomalies on the file and how it affects the rest of the image and you're gonna get them. There's one here. Oops. So I've just um I've I've just in, uh, opened up my um second screen so I'm just gonna go back and And now I'm looking at a single image. It'd be nice if I could actually get to work on this for like a minute. There you go. So I must remember not to do the treble clicking stuff. So I've got a slight anomaly here on this particular image, or this particular one of one of the 14 images. Um, I could probably live with that. I'd, I'd print it out to have a look to see how much of an effect it's going to have, detrimental effect. <coughs> it's going to have with the rest of the image. So we've got one little anomaly there. What I have found with Microsoft Dice is if it does have, um, if it does create some anomalies, is rerun it. 
because uh, the stitching sometimes isn't always exactly the same from one uh, stitching uh, experiment to the next even using the same images <coughs> excuse me but you know that one image that uh, that one anomaly that I spotted um, do you know it doesn't look like it's had a, a detrimental effect anywhere else so I could probably live with that I think perhaps if I hadn't pointed that out or it wasn't about this particular type of um, a tutorial I don't think you may necessarily have noticed anyway but as a whole I think that's a pretty bloomin' good stitch I tried it with Photoshop it took forever and the results were not as good they were equal to but just simply not as good yeah another 11 minute I hope you've enjoyed it uh, thanks very much and speak to you soon